Hello. I don't think I've ever shown you my little bear before, have I? Uh, he's actually a very, very clever bear because um, as soon as he hears any music, it makes him want to... What do you think? It makes him want to... Dance! Did you know it was me behind there? I think you probably did, because I think you probably recognised my voice. So, um, what was that all about then? What's that got to do with junior church? First of all, do you know how I made my da amazing dancing bear dance? Well, if I show you what I did, my bear is very amazing. Because um, I bought him when I took my little grandson, as he was then, to the zoo. And I said that he could choose something from the gift shop. And he said, you've got to have something too, Grandma. So I decided to buy this little bear. And the reason I bought it is because it's good fun, because inside his fingers there, and inside his feet there, there are little tiny magnets. So he can make his foot and his arm link up. He can make his feet link up. Or he can make just his hands link up. And if I go like that, you won't be able to see this, but if I throw him, he will attach to a radiator. So I have him on my radiator and I can make him do all sorts of different things. But of course, this isn't a radiator. So on the back of this, I have to have some magnets. And I've got lots of magnets here. And I don't know if you know very much about magnets, but magnets draw things to them. So if I go like this, oh, did you see? They, they almost kind of it against the wall they jump and look I can go around and I can pick up lots more magnets that's a magnet from when I went away to Italy I put it on my fridge uh, what else have I got I've got another fridge magnet here with a little frog and um, I've got a knife here and oh did you see the knife jump I'll do it near the camera. No. Move that out of the way. See if you can see the knife jump. Jumps up because the pull of the magnet is so strong that it will attract certain things. And look, look how strong that is. I'm not holding the knife. The magnets are. But um, what happens if I put the magnet on the handle? It doesn't work. But I said magnets draw things to them. Well, clearly, it's not all things. This one is drawn to the blade, which is made of metal, but not to the handle, which is made of plastic. So I've got lots of other things here. 
I wonder if I hold them up, you tell me, do you think the magnet will like it? What about this bulldog clip? What do you think? Yes? Oh, yes, definitely. What about this paper clip? Yes. What about this? It's a little tie to go around a plastic bag. Well, that's funny because that looks to be plastic. But of course, inside the plastic, there's some wire and it's the wire that attracts. Um, what about this lid? This is a lid of all the box, little box like that that I keep bits and pieces in. Do you think that'll be attractive to the magnet? No, because that's made of plastic. Um, I've got a hook here, a metal hook. And, um, oh yes, but on the back of my metal hook, I've got a magnet. And I can hang these magnets on anything that's metal. And I then have a, a hook. So, magnets draw things to them. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth has that got to do with our story today? Well, I'm going to tell you a story about somebody who somehow was a bit like a magnet. He was like a magnet because he drew people to him. Hello. Well, now, I said that magnets draw things to them, like the paper clips and the steel part of the knife, not the plastic handle, but paper clips and bulldog clips and other things that have got metal in them. Magnets seem to draw them to them. And our story today is about Jesus, who, as we know, had a way of drawing people towards him. While he was alive on earth, whenever he stood up to speak, people would gather round him and they would want to know more. And there was just something about the way that he spoke that made other people want to join in. So we have some people here who are coming because they want to hear what Jesus has to say. All of them gathering round, drawn to him. He was a bit like a magnet. Now, one day there were some Greeks people who weren't Jews, but they wanted to know more about what it was that Jesus had to say. Because after all, Jesus seemed this to be this, this magnetising person, this person who would draw other people to him. And so they said to one of Jesus' disciples, Philip, can we go and listen to Jesus? And Philip thought, hmm, I don't know, Jesus usually talks to the Jews. So Philip went and asked his friend Andrew and Andrew said, well, I think it'll be all right. Why don't we take them to Jesus and let Jesus decide whether he wants to talk to them? So Philip and Andrew went off up towards Jesus and the Greeks followed them. Now Jesus thought, I've got a bit of a problem here. Because although I've come to talk to the Jews, I've really come to talk to everybody. And it will be everybody who will be able to join me after I leave this earth. Now, Jesus hadn't said very much at this point about the fact that he knew he was going to die. Um, and of course, although he knew he was going to die, he often said to God, God, is it possible that this can happen any other way? Because I don't really want to die, but I will if you want me to. I want your name to be glorified. That means he wants God's name to be heard all over the place and to be loved by everybody. And he thought, I've got to welcome these Greeks and let them know that I have come for everybody. And so he prayed very hard to God to ask him what he should do. And he said, I want to do what you want, God. I want to glorify your name. And suddenly a voice from heaven 
came saying, my name has been glorified and I will glorify it again. And Jesus said to the people, that sign from heaven was for you, not for me. That was to let you know that God will draw us all together. And the Greeks and the Jews were all united in their love for Jesus and for everything that he was saying. But I don't know if you've noticed there's one person in our story who hasn't moved at all. And if you look at him, you will see he's here. Can you see him? He hasn't moved at all. And have a look at the way he's standing. He's standing with his arms folded and he doesn't like what he hears. Because one of the things Jesus said was, in order for wheat to grow, a grain has got to drop into the soil. It's got to die first and then it will produce more wheat. And this was a reference that Jesus was making to the fact that, yes, he would die, but because of his death, things would grow again. He would come back to life. People would be blessed. People, along with God, would be glorified. And this man didn't like it at all. This man was one of the Jewish authorities. And when he had heard what Jesus was saying about how he was going to die, but it would be all right because he would draw everybody to him, he was not happy. And he went off to tell the other Jewish authorities what Jesus was planning and what he was saying. And of course, we know later, don't we, that it was the authorities, the Jewish authorities, that wanted Jesus to be put to death. But that, of course, is another story. And if you watch our messy Easter, which is coming up next Sunday, I think you'll find that you hear a lot more about the story. I'll see you then. But in the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and hope to see you all very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>